TK. I'm Susan. And I'm Stephanie. And, and we're, we're here, here to pump you up. Yes. <laughs> okay, if you've been with us this whole month online, you know earlier this month we, we've been preparing for an unbelievable, epic, all-out, spectacular Memorial Day extravaganza race, and it's here. Oh, all that tough training has paid off. That's right, and all of you have shown amazing commitment to help us out along the way. And we've been talking about commitment all month long. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. That's right, that's right. And you can take what you've learned and you can apply it to every epic situation in your life, like following Jesus right. or like living God's way. That's right. Today, we're going to hear about something that Jesus thought was pretty epic. It was something that most other people didn't even notice. Jesus loved to teach people what it really meant to follow God, and he showed people how to value what was on the inside of someone rather than just what people showed on the outside. Jesus taught his disciples about this in the city of Jerusalem. In fact, afterwards, he would be arrested and give up his life on a cross. That's right. The religious leaders in Jerusalem, they were not happy that Jesus was there. They didn't even believe that Jesus is really the Son of God. So they would ask him questions to try to trick him and make him look bad in front of the people. And Jesus warned the people against these leaders because he saw that they didn't act out of love. Instead, they tried to make themselves look good in front of others. You know what I'm thinking? We all can learn a lot from this story today, right? Hey, and we're going to get there in just a few minutes. But first, let's watch this. All right. Have you ever decided to do something really big? Like, learn how to play guitar. Or, uh, oh, make friends with the new kid down the street. Maybe you even want to bake a master chef-worthy cake for your mom's birthday. You're super excited to get started, but then you sit down with the guitar and... Oh, no. Or you spend all morning working up the nerve to go knock on the new kid's door and... It turns out he's gone for a week of summer camp. Then you find the recipe for that amazing cake, and it's crazy. Doing big things takes work. It takes making a plan and then sticking with it. There are calluses along the way, patience and courage in building a friendship, and definitely some mess. But when you follow through, you find the music, you grow a friendship, you create amazing edible art. And through it all, others can see how God has given you the strength to stick with it. That's why commitment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey RPK, it is the end of May. And we have been telling you all month long, what have we been doing? We have been practicing for a race. Today, our basic truth is I can trust God no matter what. And when you get to know him better, well, it's a little easier to trust him. So we're gonna sing this one again this month because we want to get to know him better. Come on, we're gonna dance. Get on up. Here we go. You are the way, the truth, and the light, and that's how the story goes. Every time I hear about you, there's more I want to know. I am hungry deep inside, and it just won't go away. Only you can satisfy, and that's why you hear me say, I want to know you better, better than I know right now. I'm going to reach my hands up to you.
it's been so much fun singing that one this month because, oh, like we said, the better we get to know him, well, you know, the easier it is to trust him. So our bottom line today is practice living for God. And all month we've been training for this race of life. So let's run it well. And remember, we can count on him. We're gonna sing my hope is in the Lord. Come on, let's sing it together. Person, the one that we can count on. Everyone else will fail us at some time, but you will not. We can count on you. Oh, what an incredible gift. And God, as we've been learning this month about commitment, making a plan, and then following through, would you help us with that? If our plan has been to read our Bible every day, would you, would you spirit just come to us and say, hey, don't forget to read your Bible today. Would you prompt us, God? Would we hear your voice louder than anyone else's in our life? And then would we follow? As we say here at Rocky Peak, listen and follow God. We wanna be children, people who listen and follow you and you alone. We love you so very much. And it's in your name that we pray today, amen.
for this race. So it has taken a lot of commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. I made a plan and I practiced a lot. All that running. And strength training. <laughs> and even training my brain for a month. It's like training has been my life. Like I thought about this race constantly when I decided what to eat. Mm. Mm. Oh, when I chose how to spend my time. From morning until night, I kept my mind on the race. That's what you gotta do when you truly commit to something. Like, you have gotta live like it's important to you. Today's story is about a woman who lived her whole life that way. I'll see you when you get back. I've gotta get this party started! <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 12. Verses 41 through 44. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey the week before Passover, the crowds were excited. Hosanna! 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 Teacher, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Every time, Jesus gave a wise answer that caught them off guard. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give back to God what belongs to God. Urgh. Jesus knew the religious leaders were so puffed up with pride, they didn't want people to listen to anyone else. Jesus even warned the crowds about them. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They love to have the most important seats. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. One afternoon, Jesus and his disciples visited the temple. They sat down to rest for a moment across from the box where people came to put money they offered to God. Perhaps the disciples, mostly poor fishermen themselves, were impressed by the rich men giving gifts. Check out his robes. I think they actually might be silk. Jesus watched the rich men dropping handfuls of gold coins into the box. He knew that like the religious leaders, they were proud to show how important they were. Check this out, world. Money, money, money. Always sunny in a rich man's world. Uh. Even though these wealthy men were giving impressive amounts of money, Jesus knew they had so much, this was easy for them. Simply a drop in the bucket. Huh, she looks a little out of place. The next person in line clearly wasn't wealthy. In fact, her patched robe showed she didn't have an extra cent to spare. A widow, probably. At that time, if a woman's husband died, she had no way to earn money and often had to live on next to nothing. Two pennies? How's that gonna help anyone? Jesus was watching the woman too, but he saw something different, something more. Come over here, all of you. The disciples gathered around Jesus. What I'm about to tell you is true. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. <gasps> Jesus's friends tried to sort it out. Um, excuse me. Pennies versus gold? You couldn't buy an order of fish nuggets with that. Jesus knew what his disciples were thinking. The others all gave a lot because they are rich, but she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Oh, when you put it like that. The rich men, like the religious leaders, 
were concerned with what things looked like on the outside. They didn't want to give in a big way that might force them to change on the inside. But the poor woman, who had almost nothing, chose to give everything. And Jesus saw her heart and knew that her pennies were worth far more than the rich man's gold. Nobody else thought a poor woman giving two small coins was a big deal, but Jesus saw the truth. Other people gave because they were rich. This woman gave everything she had because she was putting her trust in God. She was living for him. And that's something to celebrate. <laughs> Living for God is about more than giving money. It's about trying to include God in every part of your day. It's about asking yourself before every choice you make, does this honor God? I could copy my friend's homework or do the work myself like I'm supposed to. I'm gonna do the work or ask yourself, does what I'm about to do show love to others? My friend didn't get me anything for my birthday should I get even by giving her nothing? Or should I forgive her? Well, I did already wrap it. She's gonna love it. <laughs> if you ask yourself those questions, it'll help keep your mind on God. It'll help you think about how Jesus lived and loved others. This probably won't become a habit overnight. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Practice living for God. The more you practice asking yourself, does this honor God? And does this show love to others? The more natural it becomes. It feels good to commit to something and stick to it. I'm glad I committed to running a 5K. I feel stronger and healthier and between you and me, I think I'm going to start training for another one. But first, we celebrate. <laughs> See you around. Jesus could see the widow's heart. He could see that she had given her money as a way to live for God, instead of worrying about herself. Jesus was so impressed that he wanted his disciples to understand what the widow had done. He told them that not only did she do something good, but she actually gave more than the wealthy people. I know, I know, you know, we call her the poor widow. She really wasn't poor. I mean, think about it. She was rich in so many ways that matter, right? She's rich in how she loved God. She's rich in how she trusted God. Man, and did you hear what Jesus said about her? She gave more than anyone else that day. So you see, the widow was fully trusting God to provide for her needs. She was loving God with her whole life. And that's what we can do too. So we can choose to trust God and live fully for Him. That's amazing, right? How Jesus can see our hearts. <laughs> every day we get the choice, like, all right, am I gonna choose his way or am I gonna do everything and guys to go my way, I'm gonna go to my, no. Every day we can choose, hey, can I show, I can show love towards God and towards others, yeah. And we can show actions, right? That we trust God no matter what. So remember, when we look to Jesus, we will always see a perfect example of what it looks like to live God's way. And just like everything else we've learned this month, living for God can take practice. So my wonderful trainees, let's do just that. And it's our bottom line for today. Practice living for God. Yep, friends, when you put what you believe into action, you can show God's love to the people around, right? Yeah, you can help point people to Jesus, right? Like as we follow him, because think about Jesus, he was courageous, generous, and compassionate. That's how we're gonna be too. It gets exciting, right? Mm -hmm. I know, think about it. We got a race ahead of us, right? We're gonna live for God. Sounds kind of fun. Sounds uh -huh. kind of challenging. It is, it is. So now let's take a look at our memory verse for this month. It's from another one of Paul's letters in the New Testament. 1 Timothy 4.8. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4.8. So let's say it together. Training, Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. 
It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. That's right. Training the body is important when you run an actual race like we're going to run today. But what matters most in life is understanding how much God loves you and sharing his love with the people around you. Training is the key. <gasps> Hear from God. Pray, pray to God. God talk, talk about God. God and live for, for God. God. Yes! Let's pray. God, you are so good, and you can see what's inside our hearts. Help us learn to live each day for you. Help us be people who love you and trust you with everything in our lives. Help us love you this week by loving the people around us. It's so good to know that whatever we do to love you is a big deal to you. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you guys next time. Hey, and listen and follow, right? Hey, go out there. Run your race. Run it.